Good morning. In anticipation of this week's discussion board, I want to give you some background information on Ellen Samuels' article, Six Ways of Looking at Crip Time, as well as more broadly an introduction to um, disability studies. Now, um, Ellen Samuels is an associate professor of English and Women and Gender Studies at the University of Wisconsin at Madison. As a scholar, she writes about um, gender, race, uh, literature, and uh, disability. So she is considered a disability studies scholar. Now, disability studies is an academic discipline um, largely housed in the humanities, which broadly speaking explores disability from a humanities perspective. Disability studies um, it's a, sort of originated in, um, in the 1990s and um, has since achieved wide-scale recognition um, among universities and academics. This is not to say that disability was never studied prior to the 1990s. In fact, um, you know, disability has long been studied um, within the academy, within medical curricula, biology classes, and other such classes, typically science-based classes. Um, but part of what disability studies scholars argue is that um, traditional curricular, traditional ways in which um, disability has been studied are problematic because they see the disability as a problem or something that needs to be fixed. So I'll give you an example. Um, you know, if let's say congenital blindness is studied in a biology or in a medical school course, um, that course might exam examine um, the biological or anatomical um, underpinnings of that blindness, and they might also examine research that's being done, let's say, on stem cell treatments to try and restore sight. Whereas somebody from disability studies would say that that focus on how stem cells can cure blindness um, is problematic, be, um, you know, in many ways, not the least of which is because it's not understanding um, the way in which disability, disability functions as a social category, nor is it necessarily taking, uh, you know, taking an exploration of the problems of sort of the here and now for that individual with blindness to negotiate his or her own world. So as that suggests, disability scholars um, tend to approach disability um, not as something that needs to be fixed, but as a social construct. And by this, I mean that the um, disability studies scholars study disability as a social category um, that exists just like gender or race or class or nationality. Um, that is that it argues that like gender, um, disability is... Um, you know, is something that our world um, has um, has defined or categorized, and has also created um, an entire series of institutional structures like um, legal apparatus, um, education, um, you know, insurance, and also a set of manners um, for basically that basically provide the world in which individuals with disabilities must negotiate. So. Um, disability scholars distinguish between an impairment and a disability, and this is actually really important. Um, these scholars argue that impairment is the condition of having some type of um, physical difference from how we would imagine the typical human body would act. So for an example is that a person who, um, who is deaf um, can't hear. So, um, you know, they, they have a difference from the majority of the population who can hear and that difference is that they can't hear. Now that person's impairment, that is the impairment, is the condition of not being able to hear, and that impairment is not a problem if that individual, um, you know, lives in a community where their impairment receives a lot of support or if they live in a community where everyone has the same impairment. So for example, there was a community on Martha's Vineyard um, where everyone was deaf. Ergo, what that meant was that for individuals in the community, they were not able to hear. They, their hearing was impaired, but this was in no way an issue, nor did it impede their ability to communicate um, and move through their community. Um, 
So it might not have even been something, let's say, that they were, you know, were aware of because it was just such a non-issue. Now, a person's impairment becomes a disability when they are in a society that um, doesn't accommodate that impairment or doesn't accommodate it well enough. Um, and also in a society that sees that disability or sees that impairment as being a problem because it needs to be accommodated. And finally, where they exist in a society that sees um, any kind of impairment as a sign or where they read individuals with an impairment as being, you know, unintelligent or needy or, um, you know, undeserving. Um, or if we go back in time or across cultures as even being a sign that someone is sort of possessed or sinful. So what disability scholars try to do is they try to teach people about disability from a humanities lens. Um, and by this, I mean that they try to teach people about, um, you know, representations of disability, how those representations um, and how the history of disability reflects the way that society has defined impairment, has defined disability, um, and yet, and then ha has also treated it um, in, you know, in law, in education, um, in medicine, um, and then in terms of sort of social customs. They also try and educate people on the idea that disability is an incredibly porous social category. And by that, they mean that people can fall into this category and they can leave it um, depending on the state of their body. So for example, if an individual breaks his or her leg, that person is temporarily disabled. They fall into the category of disability. If that leg heals and the person just goes on with their lives um, and sort of doesn't notice um, or doesn't feel severely impacted anymore because now they can walk and can function with their leg, um, that person is no longer disabled. And finally, the last thing that disability scholars encourage is they encourage their students to understand the role of disability advocacy um, in helping people who have disabilities um, to be able to, um, to better negotiate the world, and they encourage students to become disability advocates. Now, CRIP um, is a term that is used um, in the title of Samuels's essay. And it's a term that is used within disability studies and among disability advocates to talk about individuals with impairments. Um, it's kind of like how the LGBT, LB, LGBT community um, adopted the word queer. The word queer was once a slur, um, but by adopting the term, the LGBT community um, made it a symbol of their own power and their resistance. So in Crip Time, Samuels is exploring the intersection between time and disability. Um, and her article, I feel like, is founded on this idea that um, able-bodied people experience time in very specific ways. Um, they experience time as being something that is um, discrete, um, as something that is linear, and something that is um, always sort of moving forward. And also that um, an able-bodied individual's experience with time is one in which time is kind of marching along according to um, the way that we would measure time. So a minute is a minute, an hour is an hour, a year is a year. Um, they are experiencing time in ways that time matches up with their, um, with their age experiences or with their life stage experiences and also with their appearances. So what... Um, you know, so the example would be that um, an individual who is able-bodied and in their 20s will experience, um, you know, a lot of um, energy. They'll have a lot of strength. Um, that able-bodied person, as they um, grow older into their 50s, 60s, 70s, will experience um, a gradual decline in that, um, in those feelings of strength and energy, um, just naturally um, and they'll experience that experience that unless they um, add in ways to ameliorate that, let's say through exercise or um, through taking vitamins or through, you know, if they need to having something like a hip replacement or a knee replacement. What Samuels argues is that individuals with disabilities and with chronic illnesses experience wet time in a way that doesn't necessarily make linear sense. They are not experiencing time in the same way that able-bodied people are. 
In particular, she argues that um, individuals with chronic illnesses and disabilities may experience time that is, um, you know, speeding up or slowing down. Um, time may not be discrete. It may not be marching forward, and um, that time may not, or time may not be matching um, their bodily experiences or their appearances in the way that it does for individuals um, who are able-bodied. All right, please let me know if you have any questions regarding Samuels' article. Um, it is, on the one hand, um, kind of dense to think about the idea of time and to think about time as a measurement of able-bodiedness. Um, but it's also really interesting and really useful, I think, to, um, to our discussion of A Fault in Our Stars. All right, I look forward to seeing you on the discussion board.